Hey, everybody. Welcome to the very first Mindful Me podcast. Really? So excited. Uh, we just welcome everybody that's listening to our first podcast. My name is Dan Katz. My name is Thomas Scholl. And we're going to kind of guide you through something called mindfulness. So we thought, let's start by introducing what our company is. Our company was founded by some incredible people that have a great vision. So we've got three college students. I know you're thinking to yourself, gosh, what does a college student know about mindfulness? Well, it's kind of a good question, but also kind of an interesting one too. I think that people way overlook where mindfulness comes from. I think we'll kind of tackle that today. I will say that the first three people that I'm going to introduce are probably some of the most fascinating people that I have ever met and probably some of the most connected people I've ever met and look at life through a really neat perspective. So we've got Fernando de Villa and Alexa Sadaka and Jake Lynch. They are some of our college students that are spread out around, spreading our message and doing great work. We also have a high school student, Jonathan Mungle, who I will say is the most innovative student that I have had the pleasure of meeting in my 21 years of teaching experience. We also have Thomas Schull, who has introduced himself for a second ago. He is a working actor. And I will tell you, if anybody knows about mindfulness, it's our actors out there who are probably more connected than most people. Kind of have to be. Yep. I think you do. I yep. do. We're also very fortunate to have someone that I have known for multiple decades, Sierra Snitzer. She is a licensed health consultant and counselor. And she has an incredible perspective on the idea of mindfulness. And we're excited about the things that she is going to discuss over our company's history. And then you've got me. And my name is Dan Katz. I'm a teacher and I'm a lawyer, but I'm also a lifelong spiritualist. Big so, resume. Big, yeah, very big, big resume. Big, 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 big resume. <laughs> but I will say that these are the incredible folks that are going to be guiding this company on our journey and we'll be guiding you through a journey of spirituality, we hope as well. So Mindful Me has got actually two purposes. The main purpose is to present multiple times a year something called a summit. So we had found in our studies about how the message of mindfulness comes across that there are so many different formats and each format is absolutely perfect in and of its own way. But we thought the idea of bringing people together and having guest speakers and lectures and hands-on workshops to experience a day or a weekend or even multiple days um, working together, we thought would be an incredible way to spread those messages. And our first summit was supposed to be next month, but unfortunately due to the coronavirus that we're experiencing right COVID -19. now. COVID-19. COVID-19. We've had to postpone that till August of 2020. So more about that is going to be coming along the way. We are working with some incredible business partners that I can't wait to announce officially. But keep in touch because Mindful Me, that's two L's, mindfulme.org is the place to look for all of our upcoming announcements. And the second place is the website mindfulme.org and we'll put that in like a bio or, or something on the website i think so. I, a link that we can connect people to so i, I can just click it. it and go to it love links yeah they're the best links are so cool <laughs> convenient <laughs> very convenient so we will have our website but our website of mindfulme.org uh, we are a not-for-profit organization we'll have so much information on it and you can already find meditations that are there our, our goal is of course, the old adage that most people do, but I still think is a, is a perfect way to remember is our meditation Mondays. So every Monday will be a new meditation that will be uploaded to the website that you guys can access for free. And then podcast Thursdays. So this is being our very first podcast is just the first of many. So Thomas, why don't you tell everybody what some of our other podcasts are going to be? All right. So... On our podcast, we're going to be talking about some spiritual topics, um, some, wait, what is that? Oh, yeah, some book reviews, um, what mindfulness in our, uh, in the current events. So in terms of, I was thinking current events in terms of like um, dealing with sort of like the crisis that everybody's been brought to now and like how you can practice mindfulness in, a t in times like these. And we're also going to have some guest speakers on 
um, some some pretty big names as well. Like I think you said, we're gonna have Lisa on at some point. Absolutely, we're gonna have a couple really, really, really great names uh, coming up, and and Thomas is actually gonna be focusing on a podcast all his own about mindfulness in the entertainment industry. Being the fact that he's an actor, he has firsthand knowledge about what's going on. I do. It's something um, in acting school that we really practice, especially in our voice for the actor class. Um, we would always do meditations before every class, so. Um, I know, I know quite a few things about in terms of being an actor and uh, mindfulness uh, being put together as well. So looking forward to be talking about that. So And I'll also be telling you about all the to ins and fro ins in the entertainment industry. Yes. When it comes to mindfulness. Yep. Because mindfulness isn't exactly just meditation. It could literally just be talking about movies or talking about a movie that you've seen recently that you really liked or anything that makes that one part of the brain sort of like glow up what's the name of the part of the brain that like glows up when you talk about something positive so many different parts yeah i don't know uh lisa <laughs> lisa lisa talk lisa talks about it um in our in our life coach uh classes thomas uh, is referring to internationally renowned guest speaker lisa goodwin who yeah. if you ever get an opportunity to ever do any of her classes um, you can look her up on her website, uh, lisagoodwin.com. She is one of the most incredible people I have ever met, and I think she has taught me so much and about looking inward and, and being connected and being at one. So if you ever get an opportunity to take any of her classes, she is located in South Florida in the Fort Lauderdale area, but you are able to take any of her classes digitally as well uh, and it, it's just as powerful one of the most enlightened people i've ever met like you just you walk around her and you just feel it like the positive energy and the positive radiance that she has and it's just i always feel amazing after i leave absolutely and that's one of the especially really cool garden. things about oh my god her garden but especially that is like one of the absolute great things about this podcast or any of the podcasts that we do it's not about us because it's about everybody. Mm -hmm. So we, whenever we find people like Lisa or we find other things like that, we want to let you know about it. So it, it can benefit everybody. And Lisa is definitely one of those people that we want everybody to know about because it, this website and these podcasts are really just about spreading information that we can all connect to and that we can all benefit from. Right, because we all come from the same species, so we can all have similar experiences and we get affected by certain things the same way. So we're all, we're all part of one something big. We're part of something bigger. I like that. We're yeah. part of something bigger. So Thomas, and that's going to bring us to the one question, <laughs> because great segue, but what is mindfulness? Like to you, what does mindfulness mean? So for me, um, so I always had this idea of mindfulness just being like meditations and going to yoga and like something just focusing zero, zeroing in on mindfulness. But literally mindfulness to me could just be anything that makes you feel happy, that is positive. So like for me today, I went a run, on a run around my development. So just exercising and like running around and being around nature and feeling the trees around me and having the, the breeze go against my face and feeling the sun on my skin um, made me feel really good, especially when I came back into the nice air-conditioned house. Um, yeah. So things, to me, mindfulness is anything that makes you feel good, make, uh, has a positive impact on your mental status, or just makes you feel happy. That's, that's a simple definition, but that's what but it is. it's a good definition. <laughs> and, okay. So I think when we're looking at mindfulness, I think one of the things that always, or lately, I think has bothered me is that mindfulness tends to be just a buzzword. Like it's the word du jour. It's trendy. like everyone's, yeah, it's trendy. it is. It's very yeah. trendy. Like everyone's like, well, we're going to throw in the word mindful and we're going to, you know, it'll be spiritual and everybody will connect to it. Yeah. They're just like, yes, mindfulness. Yes, let's practice mindfulness. Yes, but there's no real Without actually to practicing it, it or... Or even researching what it could possibly be. So some of you may be a little bit more cynical than others. <laughs> Those that might what? connect with some of us that, that do Wonder look. That. Some of us that are a little bit more cynical, like myself. Um, but might think, well, you know, guys, you're kind of guilty of the same thing because the word mindful is in your company name. Right. And that's true. It is. But I think that the, what makes it different is when we sat around and we were deciding 
you know, we had this idea and we're like, we knew that we wanted to help people. And, you know, specifically when we were starting, a lot of our summits are going to be geared towards that teenager college age. Not right. that, you know, people that are older or even people that are younger can't benefit because they can. And I think in the future we'll be designing summits for them as right. well. It's just good to start at an early age. Right. Yeah. So that was one of the targets for the summits. Like our podcasts, our meditations are really more universal. But we were looking at, you know, our, our initial target audience and we were designing the idea of the summit. And I really forgot who it was, but somebody was thinking of the idea of your cup runneth over, right? So we've all been on an airplane and we, and you know, this, the story is used so many times, but you know, when the airplane, they, they teach you about all the emergency things that may happen, right? That, right. Which we should, which we should, but those that fly a lot probably haven't memorized. I think it was Delta that has like the whole musical on their screen, like it was like a musical of like. Was them. it Delta? I th- was it Delta or JetBlue? One of those airlines. Uh, to me, that was the most entertaining way to. Oh my god, that was present. amazing! I forgot what that. But those are what like Thomas is also my son, <laughs> um, so we've done a lot of traveling together as well. But so, okay, so let's go back to our musical, our right. musical of helpful things when you fly. But they always say that if the air masks come down, that you should definitely put it on yourself before you put it on your child, right? Right. So I know that when I was a kid, I I thought about that and I was like, God, that seems so selfish. Don't you want to help somebody before yourself? Like, why would you help yourself before somebody else? And one of my uh, original teachers, who I I will say also, uh, Tom Norris and his wife, Kathy Norris. Jeff Bridges. (laughs) Are such like incredible, they're, they're some of my, my earlier most influential spiritual trainers that I've ever had, and, and they own a phenomenal company um, that really is there to help others, Medicine Science Spiritual Center. Um, fantastic. But I remember I asked, I believe it was Kathy, I asked that question, and her answer was just so simple. She's like, well, if you can't breathe, how can you help anybody else? Right? So if you can't take care of yourself. Literally and metaphorically. <laughs> Correct, right? Literally and metaphorically. Yeah. If you can't take care of yourself, how can you take care of others? You know, and it hit me. It was so simple, and, and I felt silly for not seeing it right away. But it really helped me to, to realize if you don't fill your own cup, if you don't have enough to drink, enough to eat, if you don't have enough air to breathe, there's no way that you can really help anybody else. And, and I know that when we're thinking about this idea of mindful me, the idea of that cup and our, our logo is the you and mindful me with, you know, filled with water and droplets yeah. of water coming out of it. And people seeing it as whether it's the half full or half empty. Right. But ours is too. filling ourselves to fill others. So I think that if we could look at a general definition of mindfulness, like if we had to just summarize it really easy without all of the kind of connotation that the world has put on the term because it's a very in vogue term right now, yeah. would really be to focus on you. Like what will it take for you to be full, for you to be balanced? Yeah, because so, I mean the word selfish has such a negative connotation towards that that we never really seen it as something positive based off of everything you just said right because you think of the word selfish and everyone's like oh being selfish means you only care are you like yourself. you're arrogant or you're stuck up or like right. only, only like um you know do everything for yourself when sometimes you have to do things for yourself in order to help others i okay so there's a commercial i listen to a lot of Spiritual books on, on tape and stuff, but I also just, you know, I love sports, so I listen to a lot of sports radio too. And there was a commercial that was on, and it was, it was really cool. Like, and I thought of it when we were thinking about this podcast and about coming up with, you know, ideas for the very first podcast. And it's about a, a daughter that's helping her father, right? Because he's older, he can't really take care of himself, and she's making sure that she provides meals and laundry and medicine and all these things for her dad and at the end it's like the dad saying hold it let's do something for you is this the car commercial i don't know was it a car commercial didn't he buy her a car or something and it was like a ford commercial or something i could maybe but 
But I know what you're talking Maybe, about. Maybe, right? But it was a really cool commercial because it's yeah. like, you know, at some point, even if you are the caregiver, you, if you don't take care of yourself, you've got nothing else to give. It's true. Yeah. You know? So, and I think even those of us that are parents understand that too, that we want to give everything we can to our kids. And that's something that you can easily, totally just get carried away with, not focusing on yourself. And you're like, oh, I have to help this person. But it's so easy to get lost in that and not take a second to be like, hey, maybe I should breathe a second, take care of myself for even just a couple hours before I can continue doing this. Okay, so let's look at that for a second. Because I think that's really important what you just said. I think that's really profound. As an experience as a parent, or experience as a teacher, because like I said, I've been teaching uh, so far for you know, 21 years and I, I love my job, I love being a teacher. But being a teacher and being a parent have some similarities to it, right? It's our responsibility to take care of others. As a parent, it's my responsibility to make sure that you and your brother are, are right. good and you know, you've got food and clothes and shelter and, and, and everything else that it takes to be a parent. And as a teacher, it's really kind of doing the same thing how do you not get lost in that? Because I, I will say that there are times in my life that I know that as a parent, I got lost in the giving of a parent. And I definitely know, and as a teacher, that has, has happened to me too, where I've gotten so lost in the idea of giving that I, I really, it was at the cost of myself and my own health. Right. How do you know? Like, what are some of the signs do you think? I think things can, like, manifest physically. Like, you can notice, like, maybe you get more headaches. Because I know you suffer from migraines. Um, so one thing could be, like, oh, maybe you get a really bad migraine or they start happening more frequently. And it, that puts more stress on your body. But I think, um, like, I remember in uh, Lisa's class, one of the biggest things uh, that she talked about was just having that initial awareness. And it could manifest... Physically, or someone could literally come up to you and notice that you haven't been the same, or someone who cares about you, whether it be a student, a coworker, or even a family member, could be like, "Hey, like you should really start thinking about taking care of yourself." And I think that's that's one big way that you can find out is from other people, especially if you have a big, um, if you have a many relationships with many people, you know, whether it be at work, at home, or some friends elsewhere people who are constantly naturally will look out for you will notice these things especially if you're a really empathic person um because you can feel kind of what they're going through and that person can tell you so you, it can f manifest physically and you can also have someone like myself or maybe like um like i say like like your mom or something like that could be like you know yeah i, I just think it, it can manifest physically or people surrounding you can really say something you know, and you and you can Take a breath, look back for a second, be like, hey, maybe I should um, not rethink it, but maybe like take another step for yourself. I think because that's, that's a, that is important because I'm blessed to have you in my life that you or, or anybody in our family would be like, you know, hey, Dan, you're not looking too good. Or, you know, hey, you've had a brain tumor. You might want to slow down a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, so... But there's all these things that people in your life could actually look at and say, hey, something's not right or your energy feels off. Um, but not everybody has that, right? Right, exactly. So there's a lot of people out there that, that don't have those people. To or count. they have people in their life that are so used to taking, not that they're bad because they're great people, right. but they're just so used to taking that they're not used to having anything else in that relationship. Yeah, exactly. Right? And it's not like they're bad and it's not like they're doing it intentionally and it's not even like they're selfish. Right. It's just you've kind of set a pattern. People that are natural givers sometimes set a pattern that I'm here to give and the other person might be thinking, well, you know, hey, I'm here to take, not, you know, just because yeah. you're given the gift. Because I think I'm I think take it. Yeah, because they've been living that way for a super, super, super long time. So they, that literally becomes part of them. You know what I mean? So, okay, so let's imagine that we've got this person, right? And they're, they don't have people in their life 
like you or really good family or friends. And I don't want to say really good because I think there's some incredible people that are family and friends out there that just aren't as aware or maybe spiritually connected right. to think about the other half. They're right. awesome, wonderful people, but it's just at this point, they're not aware of the other programming in their brain, which will be another podcast at another time Correct. that Thomas and I will be doing is brain programming because it's awesome. But, um, so what do you think, being the fact that this is a very first podcast of Mindful Me, and we don't want to go too in-depth, We, you know, our idea is if you can pull a couple of things out of our podcast to kind of help your life in, in a way, then we've done our job. So what do you think we can do to help people not get lost and not drain their cup so much that they have nothing to refill it? I'm talking about people who have been living this particular way in terms of... I'm just talking people that... Like someone who doesn't have somebody to count on. Yeah. Or, or, or what if we pay. want to be, you know, let's say I'm that really independent person and I don't want you saying to me, hey, I don't think you're really taking great care of yourself. I, I, I want to be a true independent. Or we have some people out there that don't have the social network and familial network that others do they might have it on a much 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 smaller scale or they may not have close relationships they with... may not right they may not their their relationships may be different hmm. you know not bad just different so how do we build in this idea of mindfulness hmm i never thought of it from honestly i've never thought of it from that perspective like what if somebody does, who doesn't have anybody like, how would they become aware? I think there's a formula. I don't want to say formula because that sounds way too mathematical I, and math scares me. Because my, my answer was going to be super, like, granola crunchy. Like, oh, but I like granola sense. crunchy. What was it? Let's see. So I would say maybe the universe will throw signs at them. Okay. I believe that they will. Yes, yes, yes. I believe the universe is definitely going to throw signs at them. But like, what if that person ignores the signs? Yes. Or doesn't recognize them as a sign. Right. Right? He might just be like, oh, that's a coincidence. Oh, right. that's... You know. Or just not even think about it. Right. Right? How do you, how do you even know? Yeah, because the universe is like screaming at you, but you have earmuffs on. Right. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Did you just think of that? No, I like... I literally just top of my head. Oh my God, I love that. It's kind of like today when I was on my run and I had my um, AirPods in listening to music, but these people behind me were, uh, were riding their bikes and they couldn't get around me, but I had my ear AirPods on so loud that I couldn't hear them until I looked back and saw them and moved. I bet you felt their presence before they came up though. I literally like two seconds before I recognized them. Because you were so Because it was two, it was two little girls and their father. Aww. And then he kind of just like smiled as he, as he passed. Okay. So one, the parent in me says, watch the volume in those AirPods because we don't want to do damage. I was listening to Coldplay, so. Oh, well, we do love Coldplay. Yeah. Uh, what were you listening to? Um, Arabesque. It's a good song to like run to. Nice. It's a really good song. It's definitely one of their most different songs that have come out recently. Like that jazz solo just gets me every time. I got to tell you, <laughs> I think that Coldplay is one of those things that when, you know, we do the podcast of like spirituality and Chris Martin is very Chris Martin oh my god first of all if you watch interviews with him album though was so incredible there was a, it was a spiritual roller coaster it literally was such a spiritual roller coaster it, and if you watch Chris Martin's um like him on interviews like there's this one particular interview that he did on Elvis Duran um on things on how he sort of copes with um, things like this and how he practices mindfulness. Well, he doesn't necessarily say I practice mindfulness like this, but like the things that he's saying is his way of practicing mindfulness. Um, like there's this one thing that he does that I believe Albert Einstein created. I can't remember what the name of it is, but he, he Chris Martin basically said in the interview, he's like, if I'm waking up and I, you know, I feel depressed or I feel particularly negative that day, what I do is, I think it's called freeform writing. Oh yeah. It's where you write down any kind of negative thoughts that you have on a piece of paper, and you can either crumple it up, throw it out, or you can even throw it in a fire. So you're essentially burning those, those negative thoughts. There's such great, great traditions like that. I cannot wait for that podcast because I know you're going to bring so many really neat things. Yeah, like that. I literally, yeah. I See, think. nobody realized that we're going to get a preview of the entertainment podcast and spirituality <laughs> and mindfulness. 
Okay, so this is, I was thinking about this, like as you and I were, you know, sitting together and we were kind of going over what we were going to talk about today uh, and what we were going to say in this podcast. I don't think we ever answered that question though. But I think we kind of did because I think one of the things is that, okay, you and I both agree that if we're looking at mindfulness, right, and we're giving a definition to this general term that's just a buzzword out there i mean it's it's such a twitter trendy very yes like like hashtag mindfulness right so i think one of the things that we talked about was that mindfulness is really a way to balance yourself okay so if i'm making a prescription for myself to be more balanced that means that i'm taking ownership of me and i'm making sure that I fill my cup. Yeah. So if I make sure that I fill my cup every single day, I don't really run the risk of it being so drained that I can't fill it again. Hmm. And maybe I fill my cup a couple times throughout the day. Like, all right, we talked about when we first started the, this podcast, we were like, all right, meditation. Everybody thinks that mindfulness is meditation and they're just synonyms, but they're not. Meditation is just one way form, one form of to fill your cup. Yeah. So I know that for me that's the way that I fill it more than anything. Like mindful um, meditation for me is 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 so key and it's it's one of the things that I that I love to do. And it is a way to kind of empty the brain. I think it's a processor. So science tells us that when we go to sleep your brain processes everything that happened during the day. That's one of, the, one of the reasons why we dream, right? So to me, meditation is that way of really kind of cleaning out the cobwebs mm-hmm. and draining all of the mental stuff that's in your head. Yeah. I know that Lisa's used that great example of if you've got you know a dirty window, meditation's the Windex that the cleans Windex, it, yeah. right? I remember that. Yeah. So I think that that is, is one way. So I try and meditate. Every single day. And that comes in so many different forms. You know, it could be just silent. It could be a guided meditation. Um, It could be music. You know, so many times you hear a song and that is almost meditative in a way. Mm -hmm. Either bring you energy or, you know, helping you to experience different emotions. And that music can help to cleanse away all of that kind of mental baggage it's almost cathartic in a way yeah, yeah right so to me that that's a really good way of bringing balance to yourself so i have a question that i just thought of that i'd never thought of before is it possible to overflow your cup i think it's great if you could overflow your cup okay i didn't know if that was if too much was sort okay, of like those overbearing are, okay to me that's was, two different questions okay so at one point to overflow your cup. Yes, especially if there's others to kind of catch the overflow. Yeah. But can spirituality be just like anything else where there's quote unquote too much? I think it depends on how you do it. Like if you're forcing it, like if it's, right. it feels like if it's forced. Like oh, or, I have to do this to get better. Right. And you I'm know? going to – it's like those people that are, you know, that go to the gym. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to get healthy. And they overdo it at the gym because they think they have to be at the gym injured. for like five hours. And they right? get injured. They get injured. They do damage to their muscles. I'm not the rock. I'm not going to be doing three hours workout twice a day, eating eight meals a day. Like I'm, you have to know what you, <laughs> you have to know what you can do and what okay, you can't do. Okay, but see that I think is really important when you get to know yourself. Right. And I think some of these ways like that we're looking at to kind of balance yourself yeah. will help you to do that. So I think meditation is a great thing. What What's something else that you can think of? Just to practice mindfulness? Well, to bring balance to yourself. Oh. Um, one thing that I should do more often that I really don't do is read. Because I think what reading does for me personally, it kind of like opens up the creative parts of my brain. And it kind of inspires me. So I think the feeling of inspiration really balances me out. Especially, like, I remember um, when in New York when we went to go see Seawall of Life. Oh, my God. That was, that was the most inspired I had ever been to want to do something that those two men accomplished. And I think the feeling of inspiration got me so full of adrenaline that 
I wanted to do something as amazing. So I think it's going to see art and going to support art is also something that you can really bring balance to yourself. And art doesn't necessarily always mean paintings or theater or films. It could literally be anything. Like you, so art is so be... amb- ambiguous. Like it's. I think that's really, <clears throat> really, really, really amazing. And to be honest with you, I've practiced that, but never spoke about that as one of the ways to bring mindfulness or balance yeah, to I've yourself. I just thought of that. Yeah. I think it's incredible. But I like what you said about reading too, because there's so many great authors out there. There's so many great novels and, and, and reading. <laughs> well, I, and I, I think everything has its place. But the spiritual authors that are out there and the books, I, I think, is, is another way with meditation that you can really use to bring balance because there's so many different ideas out there that when you start to look at things and see things, mm-hmm. it, it kind of helps you right. on a daily basis. I know that there was, um, there is, not was, there is this idea of Ho'oponopono that when I first read about it, I was like, did not agree with any of it. But when I really sat back and I, I reread it, and it will be something that we'll do later on a podcast, essentially it's taking responsibility for everything in your life. I mean, everything. Literally everything. Is your own responsibility. That's, it's, it's, it's hard. To, that's one thing that's hard to expect, especially when you're like, wait, I can't be responsible for this. How can I be right. responsible for this? But it's just a mindset. But I would never really understood that mindset had I not really read the books. Right. So I love the fact that we're looking at ways to balance. We have meditation, we have reading, and, and I like reading in the arts because Thomas, I thought that was really good. Like I too, when we saw Seawall Life, I, words couldn't express the catharsis that I went through. I've never had a theatrical, emotional theatrical experience like that before ever. Ever. Yeah. Ever. That was just incredible. So, all right, we've got <clears throat> doing some meditation, we've got doing some reading and participating in the arts. What else do you think that we could do to help bring balance to ourselves? Eating. Healthy so eating. So the choices. massive chocolate cake that I really want right now, <laughs> that's eating? Or pizza? Or pi- well, pizza is just a food group. Here's, a th- here's my thing about eating and eating healthy. Yes, you should definitely include those healthy carbs and you should definitely include those healthy – I'm not – you know, a health expert whatsoever. I'm just going no, to No, we will be having a health expert that will we be talking will. about this, but, but from we, our perspectives. Right, from our perspectives and based off what I've been told by, like we've had a personal trainer before and he's giving us good nutritional advice. It's good to include those healthy carbs. It's good to include obviously the, um, the, veg- the veggies, the green veggies and the lean meats or lean proteins, whether you're vegan or, or not. Um, but People, it's fine to eat the things you like in moderation, and I think that's the most important thing. Like, you can't say, I'm never, ever going to have pizza ever again. I'm never, ever going to have ice cream ever again. It's just not realistic, and you'll drive yourself to binge eat. And I think that's, um, I think practicing moderation in terms of eating and having a balanced diet is a way to balance your health. You know, I think that is so true, and I know that there have been... Like, I know that you and I have, have absolutely spoke to people that are, are the experts in nutrition, right? And, you know, we're like, ah, oh, does everybody have to be, like, vegan to be, like, a perfect, you know, person nutritionally? And they you said You could be no. an overweight vegan. <laughs> it's possible. Know, right? But they were like, no. They're like, the aspect is if you like, you know, beef or you, you know, you like chicken or fish or pork, it's eating the healthiest version of that possible. Right. Right? Like eating if you like you know you and i both love steak like, but like ribeye to me is my favorite but it's the most fattiest cut of meat so but usually you should probably go with like a, a sirloin or like a what that right. has less fat in it. or a grass-fed beef something that's right? right no hormones added organic like these types of and things, the way you cook like, it too yes the yeah way you like it. don't like drown in butter yeah, as much as i butter my the hot paula Deen recipe Yes. Drowning it in don't, butter. Don't Paula Deen the, the steak, although it probably would taste it probably, absolutely amazing. Just base it in butter. There just you the go. Whole, the whole thing. Just dip it in butter. But we digress. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, there's something about a way to, like, balance yourself through meditation and, and through readings and the arts and, and through eating. And you know what? I think another one is, is working out, too. And, and I, I don't think that it necessarily means that I have to go to the gym for five hours a day. 
you know, I'm in my early 50s and my workout is definitely going to be Go different than yours who's in your, your early 20s. Right. So it, it's definitely not going to be the same workout. But a three-mile walk is great exercise. Great exercise. You know, doing some circuit work at the gym, great, great exercise. The best Hit being treat. yoga, right? Yoga. Yep. Like is becoming more and more in vogue, but for centuries that has been like the way to balance yourself physically and mentally the best, right? I mean, it's got, it's proven time and time again. So all of these different things that if we can incorporate into our life will help to balance us. And there's more, of course, but I think if we're looking at the, the four biggies to, to me at least, you know, daily meditation you know, being able to read and, and participate in the arts and see things that expand your brain and your mind and your way of thinking and, and new ways of thinking that you necessarily didn't think of. doesn't mean that you're going to agree with everything. We all have our own ways, but it definitely could expose you and open you up to, to new th- ways of thinking and healthier eating and, and working out. I think all of those things will really kind of help us to connect to our higher self. And that'll be next week's topic Mm -hmm. that we're going to discuss is going to be our higher self. So I'm excited for, for that one. But I think if we could have a takeaway, it's the whole way that this company came about and our whole logo of that you and mindful being a cup and that runneth over, right? Figure out what's best for you to every day bring some sort of balance to yourself, some way of filling your cup. Because if it isn't full, you can't help anybody else. And I'm so excited for this journey of mindfulme.org. I'm ex- so excited for the summits to start. I'm so excited for more and more podcasts, more and more meditations, and just a way of connecting to our community around us because we are all in this together. Uh, for those of you that are... The brilliant quote from High School Musical. We're all in this together. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow now, I don't like that. They're ahead of their time. <laughs> We're all in this. Okay, anyways. Yeah. So let's not go there. But we are. And, and for those of you that are kind of hunkering down, that are quarantining yourself in, in this time of the coronavirus... We definitely will have some podcasts out there for you guys of things to do when you're in quarantine, when you're self-quarantine, you're, you're practicing social distancing. Washing your hands for 20 seconds. Yep, singing happy Sing birthday. Singing the national anthem. National anthem and happy anthem, birthday. Happy Love birthday. It. 20 seconds of, um, what's the song from Hamilton? There's a one song from Hamilton that... Is it? Yeah, like the Hamilton like Twitter account like tweeted out like... Sing this verse from this song, and you know, that's 20 Thank seconds. Thank you, Lin-Manuel. Always a genius. Always thinking ahead. Always. So, but, you know, if you can figure out a way that, you know, if we have a working definition of what mindful is, that we can move forward, we know it's finding balance to yourself and ways to find balance to yourself. And, and we are dedicated to helping you and ourselves find ways to constantly keep balance So until our next Mindful Me podcast, keep checking our website of mindfulme.org. As always, Thomas, there's no one in the world I'd rather do a podcast with than you, my son. I'm excited for this. And we will speak to you guys next time. And stay safe. Wash your hands. Practice social distancing. um, All that good stuff. Please stay safe, safe, everybody. And always remember to bring balance to yourself and do something awesome for yourself every single day. Bye now. Bye. What a great podcast that was about what mindfulness really is. Be sure to visit our website, mindfulme.org, for videos, podcasts, and meditations just like this. Also, be sure to follow our social medias, at Mindfulme Inc., for exciting news and announcements. We can't wait to see you there. Have a great rest of your day.